This is a simple React component that displays a product. Let's say we sometimes want to hide the rating. You might add a boolean flag to control its visibility, but what if we want to also hide the price now? Another flag? Well, that's not great. You have an important decision to make, to continue adding flags or to rethink the component itself. Maybe we can pass the product parameters as separate props. This way we can omit some props when we want to hide parts of the component. That's fine, but it doesn't solve the root problem. This component is inflexible, so the list of props will inevitably grow to accommodate for different use cases. And the worst part? You have to keep changing the product card code to simply extend it. What if there was a better way? There is, and it's called component composition. And when you combine it with context API to create compound components, your components become easy to use, extend, and maintain. I will show you how to go from this to this in this video. So drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. So here I have my product card component, and it's a very natural way to build components in React, but it doesn't scale very well. The main problem is that if you wanted to add some extra functionality, you would always have to go into the product card component and modify it. Another problem is that product card combines props from all of its children, which leads to bloating and prop drilling. So what I mean by that is that if product info requires title, category, stars, and price, that's what the product card will also need. But then also it needs props from the product image or product button. So you can see that if I continue expanding the product card component, it will also grow the list of its props. Another issue with this component is that it's really difficult to use in different contexts. So for example, if I wanted to change what's visible and what's not, I would have to keep adding more and more Boolean flags onto the component as props. So this would make the interaction between props very complicated, very hard to understand. Let's try to make this component more composable. So we'll add what I call slots to the product card. So we can see that it uses different parts like image and the product info and the product button. So let's actually define props for those slots. So that would be the image, also the info, and the action. And let's make all of them optional. Now let's actually add those slots into the component. So we will replace all of the props with image, info, and action. And then instead of the image component, we will allow the consumer to pass whatever he wants, which we expect to be the product image. So let's add image. And then instead of product info, let's add the info. And instead of the action, let's add action. So we've created the slots, but now we actually need to pass in the components. I'll remove the imports, save the file, and then go into the app component. So now instead of these props, we will need to pass in the actual components. So as image, let's pass in the product image component. And as the image prop, let's pass in the product image. So instead of the title category stars and price, I will pass in the product info component. I'll just paste the one from before. And then change these to come from the product. And then I'll use the action prop to render the button. So we have the same component as before, but now it's a little bit more modular. We can actually pass in whatever we wanted instead of the product info, for example. I could pass in a simple div with some text, and it would show up instead. But now the product info component is actually the same as the product card before. So we can instead make it also composable. So let's go into the product info component and create the actual slots that we need to fill in. And instead of all of these, 
we will simply pass children. Now let's also accept it as props. Now let's go into the app TSX. Now instead of the props for the product info, we will pass the children. So I'll remove all of the props. And then as children, I will paste whatever the product info had before. So let's remove all of these checks. Let's import the components. And then pass in the info from product. So now we've actually made the product card composable. For example, if I wanted to hide the title, I could simply remove it and it would not show anymore. The same with the rating. If I wanted to hide it, I would be able to do that. And then if I wanted to reorder certain components, that's actually simple to do as well. So now, as you see, the product card doesn't really care about what it renders anymore. It just needs to know what the image is, what the product info is, and what the action is. And then we use the subcomponents, and those subcomponents simply take whatever they need from the product. So this is very flexible, and it solves the prop drilling because we don't need to pass in the same prop layer to layer, but it also creates more complexity because this component is now a little bit harder to use. The consumer has to know which components to use, and it exposes more details, so we need to think more when using this component. So a way to simplify it is to restrict some things. So we could restrict which components we need to use with the product card. So for example, we could say that we always want to use this product image card with the product card to show the image, or this product info component with the info prop to render the category, title, rating, stars. And we can also say that the product card should actually care about the product that it's rendering, but leaves the layout decisions and visibility decisions up to the consumer. So to implement this, we will need to use the React Context API. So first of all, I will create a new file called Product Card Context. In this file, I will create a context. I'll use the Create Context function from React. And as default value, I'll pass in null. So in the context, we will want to store the product. And also for TypeScript, let's say that it could also be null. We almost never want to reference the context directly, so we will create a hook to access it. So let's create a hook called use product card context. And inside of it, we will use the use context hook from React. I'll pass in the product card context. As you may notice, this context could be null. So this would happen if you use the component that's using the hook outside of this product card context. So in our case, outside of product card. So let's simply check it and throw an error in case that happens. Make sure the error message is descriptive. So I'll simply say that this component must be a child of product card. Now when we return this context, it will never be null. Finally, let's export the context. Now let's go into the product card and wrap all of the JSX with the context provider. So I'll say product card context dot provider and I'll simply wrap all of the content. As you notice, the context requires a value. So this value will be a product. So let's actually accept it as a prop. And let's add it as a value for the provider. Now in all of the children of product card, like product image, product info, product price, we will need to use this new hook that we wrote to access the product and take whatever we need from it. So let's start with the title. I will use the hook that we wrote before called use product card context and it returns an object that contains our product. So let's take the product from it and the product title will always have access to the context and the product because it's always going to be a child of the product card. So instead of children, we can access the product title directly. And now we don't need the props anymore. Let's actually do the same 
with other components. Let's go to the product rating and use the same context. Now, instead of the stars coming in from the props, we can access it directly off of product. So let's say product.rating.stars and then the same with the product price. Let's paste this in, let's import it. And then instead of the amount, we will say product.price. And then let's remove the amount prop. We could actually make the currency optional and set euros by default. So this will remove the amount of props that we need. Let's set it optional. Now let's go into the product image and do the exact same thing. Let's import the context. And then instead of image from props, let's take it from context. And then we don't need props anymore. Let's go into the category and do the same thing. Don't need the props anymore because instead we can take it from the product directly. Now our product button does not really use product directly, but we would still want to say that it could be used inside of the product card only. So what we could do is on click, we could actually return the product as a parameter of this callback function. So let's import the hook and use it. And then instead of on click, we'll create a new function called handle click. And inside of it, we will call on click and pass in the product. Now, instead of using this on click directly from props, we will use handle click and let's update the types. So now if we use the product button outside of this context, it will throw an error the same way as other components. Now, as you can see, we don't have anything on the screen showing up. That's because we need to update how we use the product card. So the product card needs a product prop now. And now we see that it shows up. We can clean up the other props as well. So the product image does not need anything anymore. And then product category doesn't need anything as well. The same with the title doesn't need anything and the rating does not need any props anymore. And the product card does not need the price anymore, but at the same time we set the currency as euros, which is the default. So we don't need this as well. So as you can see, we've made the product card a lot more flexible. We can easily change the layout and extend it, but it's not generic enough so that it's not useful anymore. Now it's still a little bit hard to use it because we don't necessarily know that we need to use these special components like product image, product info. So let's solve it by turning them into compound components. So let's go to the product card component. If you didn't know, functions in JavaScript are actually objects. So they can have their own properties. So this means that we can actually assign other components as properties of the product card component, basically providing them with a namespace. So this is how it looks like. I will assign the product image, for example, to product card dot image. And then if I go back to the app component, instead of this product image, I can say product card dot image. And it works the same way. Now, the benefit of it is that we don't need so many imports anymore. So I can remove this import for product image. Now, actually, let's go in and do the same thing for other components as well. So we have product button, we have product title, and we have product info and category rating and price. Now let's import all of these components. Now let's go into the app component and instead of using the components directly, let's use the properties of the product card. Now we can remove the extra imports. So this has made our component API a little bit more descriptive. For example, let's try using the product card image outside of the product card component. So now in my console, I actually see the error that we wrote before. So these components are now limited to be used inside of the product card component only. So now we've made the maintenance of these components 
a little bit more simple because we don't need to worry about these components being used in different contexts. But at the same time, we've preserved the benefits that the component composition gives us. Also, this namespace product card gives some logical grouping to the components. In my opinion, compound components is actually a very good use case for React's context API. However, I would not advise creating composable components right away because not all components need the kind of flexibility that it gives. And it's difficult to create them without knowing what use cases you need to support first. However, once you start needing this flexibility, consider using the component composition and compound components. So that's it for now. Like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with my upcoming videos. Bye.